So today I'm going to show you how a piece of cardboard can transform your resin creep projects. Really easy. You'll be so surprised at what a difference this makes. I'm also going to do some other experiments in this video and give you some more tips and tricks. So the first thing you want to do is get a nice big sheet of flat cardboard like this and lay it under whatever mould you're using. So I'm putting mould on the top like that and I'm going to work on top of that. It doesn't matter if resin creep gets poured onto this. It's only a piece of scrap cardboard and I'll probably use it for something else anyway. So I'm going to be using the 25 minute working time resin creep for this. And of course you have to mix it up by 100 grams of the powder to 30 grams of water. And the great thing about resin creep is it's really easy to mix. It's 100% a natural product and you can get it in lots of different sizes as well. And they've got loads of brilliant kits that you can get as well for it. And this is just normal tap water that I'm using here. Now, what I recommend is when you're stirring, this is a tip that's really important, always add your water to the resin creep rather than the resin creep to the water. You'll find you'll get a lot better mix. Make sure that you get right the way down to the bottom, like I am here, and stir it until all those little lumps are gone. Doesn't take long. It will stir really, really easily and mix in really, really easily. There we go. We've got a couple of little lumps that are stuck to the stick. But look how lovely and quick that is. So now what I want to do for my first experiment is to split this up into three separate cups. Hey, look at that. That's nearly even. Look, can you believe that? And what I'm going to do for my first experiment is I've got some of these acrylic inks and I bought the Montmartre acrylic inks. The reason I bought these is because they were the cheapest ones. So I'm going to give them a bit of a shake first. Now I have no idea, these are brand new, whether this is going to work or not, but I'm interested to see if it does. What I'm going to do is put a whole pipette's worth in there, and this is the fluoro blue, and then give that a mix in. Because resin creep is so white to start with, it does make your colours go a little pale. I like that, but also what it does is it does slightly darken as it dries as well. You can definitely see that's got a blue in it. So I'm going to put two dropperfuls in of that blue and make sure I've mixed that thoroughly. Because this is another tip, if you don't mix your colours in thoroughly, what you'll find is when it cures, you'll get a patchy cure to it. Oh, that's a lovely colour. So we're going to do one in there. Now I'm not going to overfill it because as you can see, there's quite a few little bubbles in that at the moment. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of that, right? So there we go. So that's that. And um, we'll do another one. And I think this time we will do a red. And again, we'll put two full pipettes in to that. Not that I would call this red a very bright red anyway. To me, that looks more orangey, but you'll be the judge of that. And then we're going to pour that in there. And the next one I'm going to try is actually pen ink. Because I have no idea how this is going to work either. And this is a blue pen ink. So I'm going to put some in like that and then give that a mix round. And you can get lots of different colours of pen inks. You get reds and greens. I think you can get yellow as well now. I don't know if this is going to stop it curing or what it's going to do. So once these are all cured, then I'm going to do another experiment with colouring as well. So stick around for that because you want to see how well that comes out. Again, make sure you've got it mixed thoroughly in. That is a lovely colour look. Okay, and now I'm going to fill those up. And the reason that we're working on a piece of cardboard is, when it's like this, it's really hard to give it a squidgy widgy when you've got flat mould. So what I'm going to do is use this bit of cardboard and just shake it like this. And that should help release those bubbles and make sure that all your bubbles are released. And when they come to the surface, because this is a quite a watery substance, then what it will do is they will just pop naturally. So I'm going to put these to one side, let these cure up for about 25 minutes, and then we can go from there. So these have been curing now for about 25 minutes and they're ready to take out. But take them out gently because they're still damp and they're fragile at this stage. But looking at them, they look... I did spill it, look. I knocked it and it spilled. So this is the acrylic ink. I think that has come out beautiful. A lovely colour. And that's the acrylic ink as well. And then this one is the ink that you get 
for refilling fountain pens. And again, they've looked like they've come out really well. I do like those as well. I can't personally see much difference in the two in colour wise, but you may be able to. So what I'm going to do is my next test. Again, working on my piece of cardboard. So let's put these to one side so that we've still got them. And then we can do a comparison. I'm going to quickly clean this mould up. And the other thing is, those acrylic inks didn't stop that curing at all. It cured up lovely. I did have quite a lot of excess there because I made up too much because I thought this mould took 200 grams of resin creep, but actually it only takes 150. So I poured the remainder into here. And I think even so, that's come out itself really pretty. And this is another tip when you're mixing. If you want your resin creep to last just that little bit longer before it cures, then what you can do is add an extra 5 grams to 100 grams. So instead of using 100 grams of powder and 30 grams of water, you use 100 grams of powder and 35 grams of water. It will give you a little bit more working time for it. Never ever be tempted to speed the mixing process up by mixing it with one of the small mixers or anything like that, any electronic means, because it will really mess up the resin creep. You won't get such a great result from it. And I know this, not because I've done it myself, but one of my lovely members told me and <laughs> posted in the members group about it. And that is the wonderful thing about the members group as well. And being a member of my YouTube channel, you get to learn lots of different tips and tricks. Here's the names of my members coming up now. And if you'd like to become a member of that group and benefit from all those tips and tricks, then the link for that is in the description below. We'd love to see you over there. It's the friendliest group in there. And there's never any drama or nastiness in that group. And I'm sure my members would say the same in the comments below. Okay, so now we've got mixed up. We're going to, again, decant that into three smaller pots. And this time, what I'm going to be using is food colouring. Now, this is water-based, so hopefully it should work. But again, we need to double check. So I'm going to be using, this time, sunset yellow, blue and pink. So I'm going to give those a bit of a shake first, because I want to make sure that they're well mixed in. And these are quite concentrated colours, so I don't know how it's going to work with them. I'm going to put 10 drops in of each. Because we can always add a bit more if we need to. And we'll give that a nice mix in there. And that pink is a lovely pink. I will link everything that I've used today in the description below. And if I've got any discount codes, then I'll put them in the description below too. And now let's pour those out the same as we did before. There we go. So then we've got those poured out. And what we can do as well with the leftover, we can either pour it out onto a silicon mat and then break it up and use it in moulds. Or I'm going to try and do a bit of a marble effect with it, with this coaster here, and we'll see if that works. So what I'm doing is pouring in that yellow into that red, or pink, I should say, and then that blue on top of that yellow. That might turn to mud, or it might give us a really nice marble effect. I'm not going to stir it until i poured it in here. And then I may not stir it after that. I want to just see what happens. There we go. And we'll leave those now to cure up and then we can do a comparison of them. So here's another tip for you. If you're going to move these while they're still liquidy, then move them using the cardboard that you've cast them on rather than pick them up like that because you're just going to make a mess like I did. So there's an extra tip. So these are the food colouring ones. And from this side, they look like they've really come out well. So there's the pink one. And can you see the extra colours that I dipped in? Um, here's the yellow one. And they will go darker as well. Don't forget the more drying time you have. And here's the blue. So they've come out absolutely lovely. I love those. So again, the food colouring works really well for your resin crate. I love that little mottled look. Let's have a look at how the coasters come out and that has come out really really pretty although the food coloring does seem to rise more to the surface which isn't too much of a problem but i do think that has come out pretty and they are darker than the acrylic ink normal ink so i hope you've enjoyed this hope you've learned lots on tips and tricks they're really useful tips and tricks it really makes a difference to how you're handling your stuff and how you're using it boot the like button hit that subscribe button and if you'd like to buy me a coffee just to say thank you for any of my videos Videos, then the link for that is in the description below. It's really appreciated and very much keeps my channel alive and going. Resin Creep, brilliant. Now my last tip for this 
is if you're going to paint these then make sure that you've left them to fully cure and dry first before you use any paint on them. And that will take about three days in a warm place. Now, if you're like me and you haven't got the patience to be waiting that long, then what I do is I pop them in my resin curer for three hours and I find that dries them out completely and then they're ready to paint the same day. Enjoy your resin and crafting. Bye.